Way Down East was directed by D.W. Griffith and was released in 1920 and stars Lillian Gish and follows the story of a young woman who falls in love with a rich man who has no intentions of actually marrying her. And soon he figures out that she is with child and so he kicks her out and has nothing to do with her and so she must go out on her own seeking a place to live and a new way of life for her and her unborn child. Guys, I was actually looking forward to this film, especially after Broken Blossoms, which I thought was a phenomenal film. And I really wanted to see D.W. Griffith do another very personal film that felt like a personal journey that somebody was going on, which was what Broken Blossoms was all about. And that's what this film felt like too. And it is for the most part. And it is a beautiful looking film. It has great characters. Lillian Gish gives yet another phenomenal performance. I just don't think that this woman can do any wrong at all. She is so amazing in everything I've seen her in, and she's phenomenal here playing this very broken, naive woman that gets involved with this horrible man that wants nothing to do with her, just to swindle her around until he's done with her. And just seeing her as she breaks throughout the film is absolutely fantastic. Lillian Gish knocks it out of the park. I wouldn't say that this is her best performance, but it is up there with this and Broken Blossoms. D.W. Griffith's direction is also really good. He's able to add a lot more comedy into this film that wasn't in his previous films, which were very self-serious, especially Birth of a Nation as well as Intolerance. But this one, he's able to have a little bit more fun with some of the lighter characters, and there are some pretty funny moments that I chuckled throughout this entire film. And then also, I just love the epic scale of it, which I wasn't expecting. This is truly yet another epic uh, in the style of Birth of a Nation and Intolerance, running for about two and a half hours, and there are scenes actually missing from this film that are completely lost. So, this movie would probably be around three hours if all the footage was put together. So that's kind of crazy, but I do love a big giant epic and I really do enjoy a lot of things with this film, especially with Lillian Gish trying to live a new life, live a lie in this world that will basically eat her up. I really commend D.W. Griffith for tackling this type of subject because it really shows how women were treated, especially if they were with child out of wedlock. And I think he does a really good job of showing how people turn on everybody. And it's really, really sad. And you just want to reach out and help Lillian Gish on her way. And it's really, really enthralling in that way. And it's something that happened a lot. In fact, this movie reminded me a lot of Les Miserables when it comes to the character of Fontaine, who, you know, has a child out of wedlock, and everybody that finds out instantly calls her a terrible person, a whore, a harlot, and that this movie really reminded me of that a lot. However, I don't think D.W. Griffith's thesis statement at the beginning of this film really rings true that America is made up of polygamists um, because, like, this man is going around to other women pretending that they're going to get married and then leaving them. And I don't think <laughs> that's exactly right. Maybe that was, you know something that was present in the mind in 1920, but definitely not in 2020. Also, this film has a really good finale on a frozen river as Lillian Gish is trying to escape from the people that took her in, who have basically kicked her out. And so she's on these glaciers that are flowing down the river that are about to go over this waterfall. And we get yet another grand finale that D.W. Griffith is known for as somebody goes to the rescue of our main character. And it's really enthralling and very powerful and some great 
beautiful imagery. And also, people like D.W. Griffith and Lillian Gish also suffered kind of permanent injuries from making this scene, especially due to frostbite and the cold, in fact. But yeah, this sequence is really solid. However, I will say that I'm a little tired of D.W. Griffith's trope of basically somebody going to the rescue at the very end. I mean, once you figure out a director's tropes, you begin to really notice them and you would just like to have something new, something different. But it's still a great sequence nonetheless, even though it feels really tired. Now, it might seem that I am praising this movie to death, and there are a lot of things that I absolutely love. As I mentioned, I love the climax. I love Lily and Gish. I like the ideas and the story. However, what I don't like, what holds it back, is its length and its pace. I don't think that this story was worth the two and a half hour runtime. I think this is such a small scaled story that has been stretched to this huge length to make it a large epic. I think this would have worked more as a smaller hour and 40 minute film, much like with Broken Blossoms, because that was a much more personal film and this film feels much more personal as well. Also, I hate using this word, but I just found myself really bored while watching it, and I think a lot of that was due to the nature of the film just being extremely stretched out and drawn out, and it just didn't need to be this long. I wasn't really invested much in any of the characters aside for Lillian Gish, and also that actor that plays the swindler. I think he is really fun. But overall, I think that this film just doesn't hold up as well as his previous films. I don't think it's as memorable, aside for the ending sequence of the film, which is a lot of fun. But overall, I really like this film. I think it's got great moments. It's got some moments that I don't really care for, pacing and that kind of issue. But I think Lillian Gish's performance and D.W. Griffith's direction shines through and makes it a very powerful picture that will please a lot of people, I think, that are willing to sit down for its two and a half hour runtime. I think it is a very rewarding film. However, it's just not one of my favorites. With all that said, I'm going to give Way Down East a 7 out of 10. Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I say check out Way Down East. You guys might like it more than I did. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next review.